Okay, so for this problem, we're going to look at using the variation and parameters method. And we have to use this method because the undetermined coefficients will not work. Again, if you think about the derivatives of tangents, turns into secant squared, and then the derivative is a chain rule with secant squared being differentiated, creating more terms, which then turns into a product. So the idea, of course, is to avoid all that mess. And, not, and again, it's not just avoding a mess. That mess doesn't work. So instead, we want to use what's called variation of parameters. And the key here is that you want to construct a solution that has the following form. Our y, p of t is a product of y1 of t, v1 of t, plus y2 of t, v2 of t. And again, the y1s and the y2s, they're the solution of the homogeneous equation. And it's the v1 and the v2 that we have to find. So again, the y1 and y2 solve the homogeneous. And we actually find the v1 and v2. And there's two formulas for these that we want to use, and we don't have to construct the wheel every time we do this. All right, so again, we first focus on the homogeneous solution, and that's the y double prime plus y is equal to zero. That has r squared plus one equals zero as its auxiliary equation, which then gives us an r squared equals negative one. So r is equal to plus or minus i. So these purely imaginary roots give us our sine and cosine. So our y1 of t is the cosine of t. And the y2 of t is equal to the sine of t. And it's very important to make sure you're always consistent with your labeling here. So what starts off as y1 and y2 must stay that way through this whole process. All right, so the next thing to do is now recall our so formulas for solutions. So our v1 of t is the result of integrating the opposite of your forcing term, which is f of t times the y2 function divided by the Ronskian of the two solutions with respect to t. And the v2 of t is a similar integral. It's the positive integral of f of t times y1 of t divided by the Ronskian with respect to t. So for both of these formulas, we need to find our Ronskian so we can set up these two integrals and evaluate them. So the Ronskian, remember, is a two by two determinant that has the y1s and the y2 for the top row. So this is your cosine of t and your sine of t. And then it has their first derivatives for the second row. So that's going to be the negative sine of t and the positive cosine of t for that second row. And then when we calculate this two by two determinant, we're gonna get the cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared of t. And then we're gonna have minus negative, which is plus the sine squared of t. And we recognize that's just one using our Pythagorean trig identity. And it is very important to make sure that you always want to simplify down these Ronskians first, because if you were to actually take this complicated sine squared plus cosine squared and put that back in your integrals, it would make a big mess that would be hard to determine. So it's a lot better to always go through and simplify as you find things. All right, so now V1 from above is equal to, again, the integral of the opposite of your forcing term, which we know as tangent of t, it was given to us in the problem, times our y2, which we named as the sine of t, divided by the Ronskian, which is one, with respect to t, and our v2 of t is equal to the integral of the positive tangent of t, times the y1 of t, which is the cosine of t, divided by the Ronskian, which is one, with respect to t. In the next video, we'll actually find these two integrals and then build our particular solution.